Our scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians in the third chapter, the 10th through the 14th verse. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God indeed. As I pondered what I wanted to say to you on this second Sunday of the Easter season, I kept hearing this refrain kind of welling up in my heart. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. I don't know about you, but on Easter Sunday, Easter Sunday can kind of feel like celebrating someone's birthday. You remember when so-and-so was born on that day, and Easter Sunday last week can sometimes feel like that. You remember when Jesus defeated death and was raised from the dead simply an intellectual remembrance and assent to an idea, a historical fact that we in the Christian tradition believe to be true. But Paul's wondering, his words here seem to say that there is something to be gained, something existential, something that ought to happen in our lives and in our community and in our world that comes from the resurrection of the dead. What does it mean to know the power of Christ's resurrection, to attain resurrection. I don't know about you, but I I haven't fully figured it out, but I, I know that that phrase calls to me, it speaks to me. I want more and more of the power of Christ's resurrection in my own life, in the life of our church together, and in the world that we live. I long for it in each and every one of us in every square inch of the world. As the psalmist says, I can sense within myself my heart and flesh crying out for it to be a reality in my life. I want to see new life, new things breaking forth in my heart and mind and body and soul in our churches and neighborhoods and the broader world and the very creation itself as we will celebrate Earth Day next week. I long to see death really crucified, dead, and buried. I want death's ripples to be abolished and trampled down in all of its ugly and vicious manifestations in the world. Are you with me on this? You can say amen if you might. (laughs) But like Paul, I say his words, not that I have already obtained this or if I've already reached the goal, but I press on, making it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. I don't remember much Greek from seminary, if I'm honest with you. Actually, Greek too, I passed with a C plus. I hope that's okay to say as your pastor. But one of my favorite Greek words that I remember from one of my seminary professors, Dr. Andrew Purvis, who was a beautiful Scottish professor, and he would say this Greek word with his deep Scottish brogue, katalambano. Here it is translated, make it my own. But it has a much richer meaning. Katalambano means to take hold of something with decisive initiative, to grasp something in a forceful manner, to seize hold of it and make it one's own. 
And the beauty of this verb here in this passage that's used twice, it's spoken of of both us and of Jesus Christ. I decisively hold that which is mine because Jesus decisively took hold of me, making me his own. It's a mutual grasping, powerful seizing of being in relationship with the risen Christ. On Easter and in this Easter season and in Christ's resurrection, Jesus took decisive initiative to seize hold of us, Catalambano. We have been raised with him, and our life is now hidden with him in God. He snatched us out of the pit. He rescued us from despair. He saved us from turning in on ourselves and called us to new life. And he has given us everlasting, eternal, and abundant life right here, right now. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from, that, from the dead on that Easter Sunday is given to each and every one of us. And in that same, with that same spirit, with equally decisive action, we seize hold of Jesus that we might know the power of his resurrection and fulfill Jesus' words, do even greater things on this earth than Jesus did. This is the message of the Easter season. Are you with me this morning? The good news of Easter is that death, in all of its insidious forms, does not, will not, cannot have the final word in us and in the world. Death has lost and will lose. Or as the Dalai Lama put it, death is simply a change of clothing. Or as Father Greg Boyle put it, death is a comma, not a period. Or as the old hymn says, there's no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. No power of hell, no scheme of man can pluck me from God's hand. God has decisively taken hold of each and every one of us. And in the power of the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, he defeated death. And I want to know more about this. I want to attain this. I want to seize hold of this in my life and the life of our church here at East Liberty Presbyterian. I want this especially in these days. I want this especially in this time that we live where death and evil and injustice seem to be making a lot of noise, stirring up a lot of attention in our world. And we, as people of the resurrection, we must declare and live every day with the confidence and assurance that darkness cannot overcome light and that all death will die. Some years ago, I was reading the public theologian Nadia Boltz Weber, and she puts it this way. Perhaps the reason why it can feel like the forces of darkness and evil and death are so powerful is because they are raging because they know they've already lost. This has to be our basic Christian confession." End quote. Friends, the resurrection of Jesus imparted, ascribed, and engrafted into each and every one of us in our baptism ought to cast out our fear of death. Yes, literally the fear of dying in our physical bodies, but also the metaphorical death that is working in the world that seeks to trample human flourishing emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, economically, relationally, etc., etc., etc. This is part of what it means to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and attain the resurrection of the dead. We must seize hold of it by actively resisting the forces of death that are still afoot in this world. Amen? Amen. Resurrection, as Jürgen Moltmann, the great German th theologian, says, is a rebirth out of impotence and indolence in a living hope, which means a passion for life and a lived protest against death. If you ever wonder, what's my purpose in life? Grab hold of that phrase. My purpose in life is to live in protest against death. That inspires me. 
That makes me want to get up out of bed in the morning. Resurrection power has hope to it, and it has a defiance to it. It has a, oh no, not in my house. This will not happen here. Resurrection people have a passion for life, and they live in protest against death. Friends, when the darkness seems too dark in the small corner of your own life or in the big scope of the world and the stench of death seems overwhelmingly pungent, we must remind each other that we are not powerless and call one another out of our discouragement and despair and lethargy. This is part of why we gather and worship each week. I would imagine to some extent it's why you're here this morning to sing and to pray and to hear God's word, to be spiritually nourished and encouraged by one another, by the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead that is right here in our midst. I need you to remind me that God is doing a new thing. We need each other to be reminded that God is creating us as a people to be God's delight. We need to be encouraged to forget the former things and creatively imagine to a new future that God is crea creating right here, right now among us. We need to be told weekly that Jesus has taken decisive action, Catalambano, to seize hold of me and that even death will die. Gathering in worship with one another helps us to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Now Paul, once again, he's kind of humble in this passage. I know Paul irritates and bothers a lot of people, including myself. But he admits that he has not fully taken hold of the power of Christ's resurrection. But he does know one thing. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Friends, what in your life is behind you that you simply need to forget, to let go of, to release into God's care? I don't know about you, but often when I think about things that are behind me that keep me from straining forward in my life, it's failure, it's mistakes, miscues, regret, times and places like Peter on that last day where I've betrayed Jesus, hurt other people with my words, remain silent in the face of injustice. The invitation to know what it means to experience more of the power of the resurrection of Christ is to forget what is behind us. And what about us as a church? What do we need to forget? What former mindsets, attitudes, disappointments or hurts, people or ways of being, ways of doing things, do we need to put, a, put behind us so that we can be freed up to strain forward to what lies ahead of us as East Liberty Presbyterian Church? Friends, together, whatever is coming up for you when I ask you those questions, together let's commit to not looking back, but forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. The goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let's strain together like one lunging across the finish line. Let's keep our eyes toward the future, the horizon to what we know and believe to be coming, the end, the finish line, the renewal of all things, heaven coming to earth. But now remember, heaven is not some lofty, ethereal place with uh, angels playing harps in the clouds. Heaven is not something that we just experience after this frail body dies. Heaven, in the biblical witness, is the control room of the universe. It's what we pray for each and every week. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
So the goal and the prize we are straining towards is heaven, which is a reality that is here right now. It's about heaven and earth becoming less distant and more close, becoming one, seizing hold of opportunities that are right here, right now at East Liberty Presbyterian Church to create realities where heaven and earth are near, where the beautiful and the glorious life of heaven is more fully present and that the death of the earth is truly dead. Our straining forward and our pressing on is simply living in this moment in light of the future hope of heaven coming to earth. We as Christians, we as the church, are implementing the achievement of Jesus' resurrection in real time here and now. Let me repeat that. We as Christians, we as the church, are implementing the achievement of Jesus' resurrection in the here and now and in real time. This is our vision. This is our dream. This is our work as a church. In the power of the Spirit, excuse me, that raised Jesus from the dead, we are people who embody and establish and work and pray for heaven on earth. By grace and in the power of the Spirit, we co-labor with God to seize hold and establish peace and justice and reconciliation, love and healing, forgiveness and mercy. These are the things that lie ahead of us, that we're leaning into, that we're straining for like a runner. And we do not look back. Rather, we lean in and strive and run towards the goal, the new, perfected, risen, restored, and transformed life that is already present and already within us. Some years ago in Time magazine, they interviewed one of the great New Testament scholars of our time, Tom Wright. And he puts it this way, Christ is coming here to join the heavens and the earth in an act of new creation. Jesus is raised, therefore the new creation has begun and we have a job to do. God wants you to be a renewed human being helping to renew creation and his resurrection was the opening bell. Friends, what we celebrated last week in Easter Sunday, a giant bell was rung. And it said, all things are being made new from that point in history onward. And we stand in that moment. The bell has rung. The stone is rolled away. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And I don't know about you, but I want to know that Christ and the power of his resurrection somehow to attain the resurrection of the dead. Not after I die, but right now, here in this place, with you, this community of East Liberty Presbyterian Church. Can I get an amen this morning? Friends, let's press on together to grasp and seize Catalambano, the power of the risen Christ that grasped and seized us. Let's press on to make it our own. Jesus has taken decisive action to take hold of us, and this is the good news. He will not let go of you. So let's forget what is behind and strain towards what is ahead. Let's live in protest to death and resist and defy the counter movement of death that knows it will not be victorious. Together, let's pray, let's work, let's lament, let's labor and worship and protest and paint and plant and parent and build and resist and hope. Let us not despair for death as we sang earlier this morning, is swallowed up in victory. And as we press on towards heaven and earth becoming one, let us hope and expect and work and pray of the superabundance of God's promised future when at last our hoped-for reality, as the book of Revelation says, heaven and earth will kiss and the home of God will be fully among us. God dwelling with us and us dwelling with God. Tears are wiped away from all eyes. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. Death 
will be no more, for the former things will have passed, and all things will be made new. Let this be our vision, our dream, our inspiration as a church. Amen? Amen. May it be so.